This was, in all those years, and continues under the present uh, direction, to be a place of creativity, mm. an atelier space, a space where you come to make things, talk about things, think about things in a way uh, that architecture studios and uh, uh, when people were, um, years ago, were working with a master craftsman, uh, that has that sort of spiritual involvement. And I think that's the thing that, for me, that has always been here. And I think the, a lot of the credit for that has to go from, to the architect of the original building, which was Professor Kantorovich, who set it up. So right from the start, um, the designer of the building envisaged this workshop being what it became. Well, it's been a legendary institution since this building was opened with Mr. Ken Peacock living in the basement here. Um, the building we're in is, ex is a very strange one. It was designed by South Africans and allegedly incorporated some principles of apartheid in its development, separate but equal planners on one side, architects on the other. And it had a sort of social hierarchy with the students on the top, the staff on the luxurious piano nobile, and the workers in the basement, where I was no often noticed some of them seemed to go mad. But Mr. Peacock, I think, stuck out by his independence, uh, his common sense. Students of architecture have to use their hands and make things, and it's a kind of practical art. So I think a good sign that someone will make a good, good architect is they like making models. It's to do with toys, it's to do with being in control, it's to do with making things and making your own world. There's so much mileage that you have with a model that you don't have necessarily with a drawing. So if you draw the plan of a building, that's the plan of a building. Whereas if you make a model of the plan of a building, you can photograph it at different angles, you can do internal perspectives, you can do external perspectives, you can do a whole series of things with it. And I think that model making is something that if we didn't have it in architecture education, I think that we'd struggle to explain certain things to students, and I think students would probably struggle to explain certain things to us as well. Model making for us is just a really essential kind of process. I suppose from, from, from the first instance it kind of introduces students to an essential part of production really, that, that things are made, they're real, they involve uh, connection with materials, machinery, um, and that happens in, in the first instance in the workshops here. The important thing about model making is that it is a real physical, um, you produce real physical objects. So the existence of real physical objects within space is part of what we do. Buildings are concrete and absolute uh, entities. Cities are concrete entities that exist as reality as well as as an idea. The idea of making, I think, is located within the concept of craft. And any form of, of design practice requires craft to actually deliver it. Now the question of how that craft is defined, whether it's the craft of uh, working with a piece of software code, or whether it's the craft of actually taking a piece of material and refining and making it into a thing, is part of a kind of whole story about design development. Somebody once says that that sort of plans and sections are no more architecture than crotchets and quavers are music. It's a representation. So when you see something that's real and has all the component bits, you can sort of stare in awe at these things. You know, we've just found universally people kind of look at models, understand them, kind of get them straight away, really. It's a, um, even though, you know, kind of computer renders now are all, you know, kind of more real than the reality. There's a sort of real, you know, certainly a realism to them, but, but still the model seems to hold a very, very sort of relevant place as a kind of piece of communication. There are many different models and there are many different reasons for making models. I mean, you can have site models, uh, you can have exploratory models, sketch models, detailed design models and finished models. And that's of uh, students' proposals. There's also models uh, of precedents as well. So these are all models which explore the nature of architecture. But there are also models which explore the nature of model making. Um, so it serves many, many different purposes and is a fantastic educational tool. Selling an idea through the idea of a model and actually using models as a sort of design tool as well is, is part of the process. Um, <clears throat> if you look at some of the big offices, let's say the obvious ones, Norman Foster, Associates, 
they will spend hundreds of thousands on models. They're, they're maybe bidding on a, on, on a scheme that might be worth you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds. What you bring to the clients is absolutely important. A client who doesn't understand, going back to my sort of early thing about students not understanding plans and sections, nor do clients in many ways, but they can be absolutely entranced by a model. A model that actually will show some of the workings of the building, show it in context, show it at night, show it activated with walkthroughs and fly-throughs. Um, very, very important. Ever since I've been involved in, uh, you know, ever since I started the university really, and then been involved in education and architectural practice, the digital future has been promised. Right? So uh, back in the 80s it was the paperless office, uh, before that it was the computer drawing, subsequent to that it's been you know, digital space taking over real space. Um, yet, amazingly, things persist. I think 15 years ago people assumed that uh, the physical model would be completely replaced by digital media. Um, and uh, in the same way as we've seen with drawing, uh, the manual skill uh, and the immediacy of the, of the manual skill has, um, has come back. Certainly in the latter stages of my education in the sort of late 90s, uh, these terrible things were coming, computers that were going to take over the world and stop us all making things and doing things. But actually that turned out to be a blip. Um, it only lasted about two or three years and very quickly people realised that perhaps high, high rendered images, um, accurate uh, in inverted commas, material samples put onto CAD models just didn't give them that direct understanding, uh, that, that connection. And that's something that uh, I guess uh, Yuhani Palasma talks about in the eyes of the skin. This idea of models, physical models, are, are very powerful to the hand and the body as well as the eye. And it's something that CGI even now, even with all the dynamic tips and tricks that we have with uh, fluid dynamics and simulation models, predictive models that we can do with computers, we just don't get with physical models. And the originality and individuality can only come out by uh, a person or, or a group of people uh, producing something by hand. So the kind of craft quality um, has come back uh, to the fore. Now with um, the use of digital media and the three and the three D world, uh, that presents a whole other range of possibilities. But I think that the uh, the manipulation of all those different types of experience will um, uh, will will keep it fresh. We, we, you've got MDF, you've got chipboard, <laughs> all the modern materials, but still you've got material, timbers that um, lend themselves because of their stability and their, um, they don't expand and contract. They're very, very vital to what the work you're doing. Now students have got to understand that and then that knowledge they take forward with them into practice. You have to experience it. Yeah, it's also, I think um, the modern technology makes things more accessible to people. I mean. Some of us were sort of um, nas natural model makers, and some people aren't, you know, they're different yeah, things, but definitely. everyone can have a go. After a sort of dip in the 90s, throughout the 2000s, more and more people are making models, they're being more celebrated, uh, there's a real renaissance of architects using them, even the very digitally orientated architects that we're aware of, like Unstudio, Zahadid, all those guys, they have model making departments and they're making those things and exploring how those things go together. Uh, I think it's imperative really for, for our students, especially because it's a, such a design orientated field and I don't think, the, you know, a lot of the, the speakers that you've probably recorded today will say that, you know, it's, it's having um, access to, to, to be able to play with the technology and, and, and explore, you know, their, uh, their ideas through, through the media of, uh, of models, really. I think that there are certain things that it doesn't hurt to know how to cut a piece of timber and join a piece of timber as a starting point to design. And if later on you decide that you can 3D print that much quicker, much more effortlessly, then that's fine. But I think as a starting point, you should learn all the tools available to you and not just go for the most technological ones. 
Well, when you say current technologies, you would include cardboard, you would include glue, you'd include a scalpel and you'd include a pencil because all of these are technologies that are available to the student. Uh, there are very contemporary technologies to do with 3D printing, to do with laser cutting, to do with digital design, which are, are just tools which will help the student arrive at the form of a building. It's not just about kind of computer orientated stuff, it's you've got to be in right at the start kind of making physical models and you know adapting them and changing them and rationalizing your ideas through a model rather than you know just going straight to a computer and, and cranking out you know like the design it's ha having access to to everything that's here <coughs> is is an absolute luxury compared to um what a lot of students will find after graduating and going into industry is that the, the facilities that are, that are on offer are, are probably better than they will ever come across at any one institution. Um, so we would say anybody that comes in should really take advantage of that and try and try and learn as many different things as they can, just to have had some experience or insight mm. into the application of these different pro processes. Between the idea of the workshop as a studio, where there's there's conversations and reflective thinking, which I think this this workshop represents. And there are workshops which are about provision and production, which aren't reflective. You go in there to make something that you have a preconceived idea what to make. And so it's the idea that the workshop is studio, I think, is important. And, and I think that's one thing that we've sort of got here. I would like to say that the better students congregate in this workshop and made models down here rather than sitting at the drawing boards upstairs. And, it, you know, we made some brilliant models in here. I think, I think it's... It's, it's great with students, but it's even better when you can come down and test some ideas, you know, and the experts in the room actually make it all the more enjoyable. Anybody who was anybody mm -hmm. came here. Yeah. And if you brought somebody uh, to, the, um, to the School of Architecture, a visitor, and I frequently brought them to meet Ken in here. I wouldn't have taken them to the uh, science laboratory or the, uh, or the uh, lecture theatre three or whatever, but to come here and to see what happens here uh, was uh, absolutely... F and people latched onto it. People uh, wonder at um, this type of stuff, which is, is kind of gathers dust for a while and, and can then be kind of uh, um, looked at afresh in, from a kind of historical perspective. So it's, it continues to play a very important role.